Before we jump into today's video, I'd like to give a shout out to today's sponsor, Royal Match. Royal Match is a free to play match three puzzle game with thousands of unique levels. Your goal is to help King Robert build and renovate his castle back to its former fun, vibrant and glorious form. Royal Match is the perfect game to unwind, relax and dive into as there are no ads, which means less annoying distractions when playing. It is the perfect escape when you want time to yourself. The game also doesn't require an internet connection, so you can enjoy the game anytime, anywhere. Another great feature from Royal Match is teams. You can team up with friends or family to complete different levels, as well as compete for global or local championships. So make sure that you click the link in the description or scan the QR code to download the game for free and start your royal journey today. Tell your friends or family to do the same so you all can experience the royal treatment together. You know, way before TLC put out their hit song called No Scrubs and Destiny's Child put out their hit song called Bills, 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 there was a song back in the 80s that told men they weren't getting no romance without finance. And that's the song called Ain't Nothing Going On But The Rent by Gwen Guffrey. That song became a women's anthem still, and it still is to this day. You gotta have a J-O-B if you wanna be with me. <laughs> Gwen Guffrey doesn't get the flowers she deserves as a singer. She was a, she was a powerhouse singer too. And she can do the slow, slow ballads too. She definitely, she's definitely underrated and overlooked. Because see, when disco had faded out, house music started to emerge and she was at the forefront of that. Her fan base was the club community. Luther Vandross said she was a genius and her writing was an inspiration to us all. Her humor and personality were also prolific as her undeniable singing ability. So let's get into her story, right? Now, Gwen Guffrey was born on July 9th, 1950 in Newark, New Jersey. She was the firstborn of two kids from her parents. Now, growing up at an early age, she started singing in the church. Her church was the New Hope Baptist Church. And you know what? There's a video of her singing at the New Hope Baptist Church in Newark. And a lot of famous singers came out of that church, like Dee Dee and Dionne Ward, Sissy and Whitney Houston also. And by the age of eight years old, her father began teaching her how to play the piano. By the time she got to high school, she started singing with a female quartet called the Ebonettes. And she also sang with another group called the Matchmakers. And that's where she met her boyfriend, Harris Fire, who was also part of that group. After graduating high school, she attended Newark State College. And when she graduated there, she started teaching first grade at an elementary school in New York. But her passion was still singing. And that's when she started writing and singing commercial jingles for Chevrolet, Avon, Burger King, Sprite, and Kentucky Fried Chicken. She was actually working with Valerie Simpson from the legendary duo Ashford and Simpson. She was doing jingles around that time also. But you know, Gwen, she ended up quitting the commercial and jingle business because they was always telling her to try to sing like Aretha Franklin. And she said she wanted to sound like herself. You know, she said uh, doing commercial jingles is good and bad. Financially, it's good, but you lose your imagination. Later, you'll find it's all you can do. But she said now she got her imagination back and she don't want to lose it again. So after that, that's when her and her boyfriend... Harris Fire ended up joining the band called East Coast. And guess who else was a part of that group at the time, East Coast, y'all? Larry Blackman from the group Cameo. 
and they did release an album in 1973 but you know Gwen and her boyfriend they wanted to do more songwriting for the band East Coast and they ended up leaving the East Coast group after having some issues with one of the other songwriters in the group and that's when they hooked up with the Commodores manager named Benny Ashburn who thought their songs was good and he decided to help them land their songs to some other artists but then in 1974 Gwen got the chance to sing background for the Queen of Soul Aretha Franklin on her single called I'm in Love which hit number one on Billboard's R&B chart for two weeks and also hit number 19 on the Billboard Hot 100. You know, Sissy Houston was also singing background on that song with her. And she was the one, Sissy Houston was the one that got Gwen to come sing for Aretha after one of the other background singers was sick that day. And you know, Sissy Houston is from New Jersey also. And she knew all the up and coming singers from Jersey at that time. But you know, Aretha's, Aretha Franklin's version of that song, I'm in Love, is the best one in my opinion. Because you know, that song was actually written by Bobby Womack. And he wrote it for Wilson Pickett in 1967. And then Bobby recorded his version the following year. They say uh, Bobby Womack wrote it as a response to all the criticism he got after he ended up marrying Sam Cooke's wife, Barbara Cook, after Sam was murdered just three years must be four and you know something else that song i'm in love also played in the movie uh sprung 1997 movie called sprung starring tisha campbell but anyway after that gwen and her boyfriend horace ended up signing a publishing deal and they ended up writing like nine songs for the group sister sledge on their 1975 debut album titled circle of love that same year they wrote this song called Supernatural Thing for the R&B singer Ben E. King, which ended up hitting number one on the U.S. Billboard Hot Soul singles and hit number five on the Billboard Hot 100 charts. And they also wrote his other song called Do It In The Name Of Love, which hit number four on the U.S. R&B charts and number 60 on the Billboard chart. Then they wrote a song called This Time I'll Be Sweeter. They wrote that for... Martha Reeves, which was later covered by Linda Lewis and Angela Bofield. I love uh, Angela Bofield's version of that song. That was a beautiful song right there. And you know, with all the work that Gwen was putting in, she was offered a deal. She ended up getting a solo record deal with CBS Columbia Records. And she said she didn't, she didn't want to be a solo artist at first because of the pressure of being out in the front. You know, she played the background, like to do the background singing and songwriting. But when she got that solo deal, she wrote and produced the whole album herself. But then disagreements between her and the label led to the cancellation of her album's release. She said she didn't think what happened was she said she didn't think the label was ready for a female producer because they brought in all these male big time producers to remix the album. And then they try to charge her for it. But after that, you know, 1978, she appeared in the Wiz movie as one of the singers in the choirs. And she wrote the song called God Don't Like Ugly for Roberta Flack featuring Donnie Hathaway. And she went on tour with Roberta Flack too. She also sang background on Stephanie Mills number one hit song called Never Knew Love Like This Before. Wow, I didn't know that. I just love that song by Stephanie Mills. Because Stephanie Mills, she won a Grammy that year too for that song. For uh, Best R&B Song. No, she won two Grammys. Best R&B Song and Best Female R&B Vocal Performance. But that's Gwen singing background on that song, y'all. After that, she ended up going to Jamaica. Gwen had went to Jamaica to work with reggae artist Peter Tosh. You know, she was singing background on his album. She sung on Bush Doctor mystic man and wanted dead or alive she sang lead vocals on a duet song with peter tosh called nothing but love which hit number 43 on billboard's hot soul singles chart and she also hooked up with reggae artist sly and robbie and did a lot of singing with them for their debut album which led 
her to get in her own record deal with Island Records. And in 1982, she released her self-titled debut album on Island Records, which hit number 28 on Billboard's R&B Albums chart. And the lead single off that album called It Should Have Been You hit number 11 on Billboard's Dance Disco Top 80 chart and hit number 27 on Billboard's Black Singles chart. She has some more songs on there too that the fans love like Peekaboo and For You with a Melody too. A lot of people love those songs too. But the same year, she also sang background on Madonna's 1982 debut album. That's Gwen singing on the song Borderline, y'all. Wow. She's singing background on Borderline for Madonna's album. Now, in 1983, she released her second album titled Portrait, which really didn't make the album's charts in the United States. It didn't hit the charts like that. But it did hit number 42 on the album's chart in New Zealand. And her single called Peanut Butter hit number 83 on Billboard's Black Singles chart. And she had another song called Hopscotch. But, you know, that one really didn't chart at all, though. Now, in 1984, she was featured on a Dutch music group called The Limit. They had a single called Say Yeah, which hit number 17 on the UK singles chart and number 7 on the Billboard's Hot Dance Disco chart. That same year, she released a single called Love and Moderation, which hit number 10 on the Billboard's Bubbling Under 100 singles chart and number 17 on Billboard's Hot Black Singles chart. In 1985, she released her third album titled Just For You, which hit number 55 on Billboard's R&B Albums chart, and the title song hit number 53 on Billboard's Hot Black Singles chart. That same year, she released an EP called Padlock, which hit number 47 on Billboard's R&B Albums chart. The song Padlock hit number two. That hit number two on Billboard Bubbling Under 100 Singles chart. But right after that, you know, she ended up leaving Island Records and she signed with Polydor Records. And 1986, man, she released that fourth album called Good To Go Lover, which hit number 20 on Billboard's R&B charts and number 42 in the UK Albums chart. Now, this album, man, she released this single called Ain't Nothing Going On But The Rent. That's when she really made a name for herself because that song became the biggest hit of her career. It hit number one on both the U.S. Billboard Dance Music Club Play Singles chart and number one on Hot Black Singles chart. And it hit number 42 on the pop chart. It also hit number one in New Zealand and Zimbabwe. That was the, man, that was the jam right there. You got to have a J-O-B if you want to be with me. No romance without finance. <laughs> and you know, for her to have a number one hit in 1986 was great because the competition was like heavy. The competition was crazy then. Whitney Houston, 1986, Whitney had How Will I Know out, that hit number one. Prince had the song Kiss. Cameo had Word Up. Janet Jackson had out Nasty. What have you done for me lately? And the list goes on. But Gwen had her number one hit though. Ain't nothing going on but the rent. That was a, it was a great song, man. 1999, Foxy Brown, she did a cover of that, a cover of that song featuring uh, Maya called J-O-B. And, you know, that album, though, she also has some other songs on that album that hit the charts like They Long To Be Close To You and Outside In The Rain. You know, that album also had production and featured the R&B group Surface. Surface was my group. Y'all know Surface. Now, in 1987, she released a compilation album titled Ticket To Ride on the 4th and Broadway record label that same year. She was featured on reggae singer Boris Gardner's song called Friends and Lovers. In 1988, she ended up signing with Warner Brothers Records and released her fifth album titled Lifeline, which really didn't make an impact on the charts. But she had a song on there, though, called Can't Love You Tonight, which was strictly about 
AIDS. Because at the time, AIDS diagnosis in the U.S. had reached over 47,000. And the proceeds to that song she put out was donated to the AIDS Coalition. You know, Gwen was a big supporter of the fight against AIDS. And she was a supporter of the gay community. She was also good friends with New York DJ Larry Levan, who used to play at the club called Paradise Garage, which was a gay club. And they call they call Gwen the first lady of the Paradise Garage. She used to rock, she used to rock that place, man. She also had a song called Free that was on the Tap movie soundtrack that following year. In 1990, she signed a reprise records and released her last and final album titled Hot Times. And the single called Miss My Love hit number 27 on Billboard's Hot Dance Music Club play charts. In 1992, you know, she continued releasing music like songs. She had a song called Eyes You Never Really Cared and This Christmas Eve on a Hot Times Record Inc. label. But you know, neither one of those songs made an impact on the charts. In 1993, a remix version of Ain't Nothing Going On But The Rent came out. And that hit number 42 in the UK singles chart. But you know, after that, she kind of just disappeared from the music scene for a while and just ended up spending time with her family. She had two daughters, you know, and she just took out time just being with her family. She also got into acting. She landed a couple roles in some movies. One movie was uh, Spencer Confidential, Chasing Amy, and Very Bad Things. Then in 1998, she was diagnosed with uterine cancer. She got diagnosed with uterine cancer and the following year, on February 3rd, 1999, she died from uterine cancer. Yeah, she died, man, you know. But you know, Gwen Guffrey, she just never gets mentioned when it comes to one of the greatest singers from New Jersey at that point, from New Jersey. I know you got the Whitney Houston's, you got Sissy Houston, Regina Bell, she's a great singer. Regina Bell's a great singer. Dion and Dee Dee Warwick, Faith Evans, and the list goes on. But Gwen Guffrey's voice was phenomenal, though, man. She had a she had a beautiful voice. And you know, her daughters, her daughters can sing too. Both of her daughters, they have some beautiful voices too. And hopefully, um, they put out a book about their mother's life someday. That'd be a great book too. But Gwen was only 48 years old, y'all. Man, she was young, 48. Rest in peace, Gwen Guffrey. 